You see that, my friends? That's a spin dash. Sonic didn't have a spin dash in the original version on the Sega Genesis. That was actually introduced in Sonic 2. This game would have been, for the most part, very broken and pace-breaking and even worse than I'm about to make it out in this review. Hello everyone, this is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing Sega Ages Sonic the Hedgehog for the Nintendo Switch. Okay, this is one of the better names for video games, but man, is it going to be the butt of a really terrible joke, because this game has not aged very well, so it should have been Sega Poorly Ages Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, before I get into the harsh critique of a game that's mostly just for historical purposes, I want to talk about what the Switch version brings to the table. So for starters, it offers a plethora of options that make the game slightly more bearable than its Genesis counterparts and its countless re-releases over the years. It features Ring Saver mode, which lets you keep most of your rings when you get hit by an enemy instead of losing all of them. Which, mind you, as long as you held one ring in your hand, you could keep going. If you had zero, it would be game over. Well, lose a life, at least. There's also a time attack mode, where you can see how fast you complete a zone and then upload it to an online leaderboard to see how other people have cleared the zone, which is great for the speedrunning community, which really didn't exist in 1991. So, at least Sega is sort of learning from the times. There are three different versions of the game to play. There's the international version, which is what you're seeing on the screen. You can even play the Japanese version, which has it so that you have to collect 5,000 points instead of 100 rings to get an extra life, because extra lives are very, very hard to come by in this game. You're lucky if you can get above three. And then there's the Mega Play version, which I would actually say is probably the definitive version of this, of the three different <clears throat> available options, because it's based on the arcade version of Sonic the Hedgehog that was previously only available in Japan. And what it does is it gives each level a strict timer. Instead of the timer going up, the timer goes down, so you can very easily get a time up bonus. Also, the zones are in a different order. The Green Hill Zone being first is pretty much the only thing that's consistent with the main game. And if you got a game over, you'd have to insert more coins to continue the game. Thankfully, since this is the Switch, not an arcade, you can just press a button. And you can put in as many quarters as you want. And you can even start back from a checkpoint pull, even after a game over. Which is really amazing, and it kind of reminds me of Sonic Forces a little bit. Which, I actually kind of like that game a lot more than most people give it credit for. But that's a topic for another day. There's also different options for the presentation. You can choose to smooth scale, smooth scale, the game so that the graphics are to your liking. You can set it so that it's full screen, like what I have, instead of having those obnoxious borders like a lot of virtual console games do. Of course the default option is to have this stupid box art of Sonic taking up like so much of the screen that it's a little bit ridiculous, but thankfully you can turn it off, which is exactly what I did. And it features a really amazing opening cutscene, which I swear I did not photoshop that guys, that was in the game when I started it up, so. Congratulations, Sega! If only the rest of the game could have received that much level of detail. Now, it's time for me to go into the actual game itself, and oh my goodness, does this game have a desperate need to learn from the games that came after it, because this is a really rocky start to a franchise that has one of the most divided fan bases in video game history. So, first off, Sonic is actually kind of slow in this game. This is among the slowest he's ever been. When he's underwater, this frame rate crawls to about 10 or 15 frames per second. Not even joking, you try playing the Labyrinth Zone at this game's intended speed. Other than that, because Sonic didn't originally have the spin dash, unless you're gonna use that, which is provided with the Switch re-release, 
This game requires you to build up your own momentum because Sonic really isn't that fast. This game didn't use blast processing yet, which was introduced in Sonic 2, so a lot of the zones focus more on really precise, tight platforming as opposed to running as fast as you can. A lot of levels after the Green Hill Zone feel very, like, corridor-like in nature, which doesn't really suit Sonic. I mean, heck, you hardly even find corkscrews in this game. It's like, that was Sonic's signature thing, is having corkscrews to show off his speed. Not only that, but the level design is incredibly thematically boring. There's really not a lot of variety to these levels. Besides the Green Hill Zone, which is so iconic that it's been remixed more than any other Sonic Zone in those countless Let's Restore Sega to its Glory Days games. But that's about the only good zone in this entire package. Everything else is either underwater or in a cave, and the music just seems way too happy. So you don't feel immersed in the experience. You feel like you're playing two separate games, one where this is in a peaceful, joyful, celebrate, celebratory field, and another where it's showing you that you're underground, but you don't feel like it. I mean, even the original Super Mario Bros. in 1985 had an immersive underground theme, albeit very limited in its notes, but it got the job done. This is a 1991 game on vastly superior hardware. Would it have killed the composer to maybe compose a dark and brooding music for most of the soundtrack. Well, it probably wouldn't have sold that well if that was the case, but they also chose to make Sonic have an attitude, so who knows what they were thinking back in the early 90s. In addition to that, there are also some occasional frustrating moments that require extremely unintuitive puzzle solutions. Just to name a few. I encountered one where I needed my best friend to help me out, and he completed it in two seconds, saying, well, Paul, you were supposed to jump into the ceiling to make the ceiling turn into stairs. And I was like, who does that? If I could do that with my house that I'm currently in, then I wouldn't have to worry about being inside a garage. <sighs> I can't think of any other game that has such poorly designed puzzles besides maybe Four Swords Adventures. There was another one that I encountered where I was trying to go to the right, but Sonic just would not have enough momentum even if I tried to use the spin dash. So Andy said, well, Paula, you were supposed to hold down the entire time. And I was like, why are you holding down when I want Sonic to go to the right? That, that's like holding left when you want to go to the right. It just, if, it doesn't feel natural. So, yeah, I'm pretty critical of this game, as you might have noticed. And I apologize if I put you guys off. But I love Sonic the Hedgehog games in general, especially Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic Mania, and even Sonic Forces to a degree. Heck, I would even go so far as to say Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on the GameCube was better than this. I just... I wish people would not revere the Genesis games as though they're these godlike games that cannot be touched, and therefore nothing will ever be better than them because... <laughs> There are some 3D Sonics that are a heck of a lot better than this game. And I want Sonic to succeed, especially if you ever watched my glowing review of Sonic 3 and especially Sonic Mania, is I want this style of gaming to return, but I want it to be perfected. I want it to be remembered as a timeless classic, not as a historical oddity. However, with that said, this game is actually really cheap if you get the Switch version. Mind you, it's probably, well, rest in peace, Wii Shop channel. It was probably cheaper on the Wii's shop, but as it stands, if you want it on a Nintendo system, it only costs about $5, which is about the value I would expect if you're determined to love this game. So with that price, sure, go for it. I just think you should wait for it to be in some kind of compilation with other games, like the upcoming Sega Genesis Classics, which is also for the Switch. As a standalone game, this is pretty mediocre and forgettable, and you're best left with sticking to Sonic's sequels, which vastly improve upon the experience, learn from this game's mistakes, and overall offer a more pleasant Sonic-like gameplay experience. With that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed me butchering the levels, because as you know, I'm not that great at Sonic games. Until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, 
God bless, and it's good to strike a balance between too fast and too slow. Bye!